Well, sir, I made a this my DIY self build that's taken forever. And on this exciting episode, I'm gonna tile the shower. I wanna mix my gear up here as well, so I'm gonna put in a temporary tap, which means I need to drain the water out. When I plumbed in my water and my stop cut, I didn't put a drain off point in. So I'm gonna chop in an outdoor tap and just leave it about here in three, two, one, bang. Here it is. Oh my God, it's dark out. I had to get a bit extra on this one. <laughs> I couldn't find me um, little ones. I just had to use this. And here's my temporary tap. Little switch there, bucket, sorted. I go for these. They've got a bit of a like handmade kind of look um, from Mandarin stone. Well, they're actually from Italy. You can get them in a few different places. Does anyone know any like little pixie fairies or something where I, I don't mind doing the work. I just don't want to tidy up <laughs> or move anything so I can do the work. Is there anyone else like that? I tidied up and then it just feels like I've made a mess again, just getting all prepared. <laughs> right, first thing I done was I sealed in my shower tray and I used a map hire silicon uh, sealant which is for sanitary that's just to make sure if the silicon ran a tile was fouls then it won't get down below the actual shower tray even though it doesn't really matter because it's tanked then i made sure my tray wasn't going to get marked in any way shape or form there's cardboard and masking tape around the edge because no doubt you end up dropping a little bit of adhesive so it's always good that protective film on the actual trays or the baths not really good enough and you'll find if you drop big clumps you won't have a very good time trying to get it off then you want to have a look for some battens because you'll need them if you want to do a good job of it i've had a look around straightest as you possibly can especially if you're going to the diy store in the end i ended up using uh, the remnants of some cupboards that i kept specifically for odd jobs and i used a track saw to rip it down that I bought from an Albanian gangster in London. And you want to use a laser to get it bang on all the way around. The reason why we're doing this, because we can't rely on a tray. This is bang on level. This is bang on level. And then this, it's come up maybe like a millimeter or so. And that's basically the tray is slightly warped. It wasn't me. I screwed them directly into the stud work. And then that way you're not going to get any bending. It depends how stiff your wood is basically. And at the end, the batten's over here, but you need to leave a gap for your tile trim. So I've just propped it up in the end. That way this bit won't sag and then them tiles go that way. You want to work out your tile layout going upwards and it, obviously you don't necessarily want little slivers here, there and everywhere. I've worked it out so it's almost a full tile at the bottom. The reason why I've done that is almost a full tile up here, but maybe about three quarters because I know from this corner to that corner, it's off by about 10 mil or so. And I've done my dimensions, made all the measurements, measured the actual tile itself. That way I could use it to work out whether I was gonna have a two millimeter grout gap, a three millimeter grout gap, or even a four. Now, I did think I was going to go for a four millimetre gap, but now I've decided that I'm going for a two. And the reason why that is because it actually worked out better on the calculations. Just a little tip if it helps you. Um, I'll say, right, I'll do the back wall first. So that was 1307. And then my tiles were 58 millimetres wide plus a two mil space, so that's 60 mil. So if I divide that by 60, gives me 21.783 recurring. You think, oh right, okay, I'm gonna have 21 tiles and then at one end I'll do 0.78 at a tile. You don't really wanna do that. I just want even tiles at either end. So you basically take the 20 off of that and that gives you the 1.783 and you divide that by two. So I'm gonna have 0.89 of a tile either end and that's the easiest way to work it out. So I'm actually going to do the back wall first because by the time I've done all the tiling, uh, the thickness of the tile and the bed of the adhesive bumps it off this way a little bit. And then I've worked out exactly where my um, tile trim is going to go because I always put my 
shower screen bang up against it and then when I come this way I've got to take off like five to ten mil of this last tile so that that works out nice and I also set this height on the basis of where this last tile will finish I'll have to take off about 60 mil or so and then when I come over to here obviously at some point I'll have little triangles but they should be even We'll see if that works out and whether I was clever enough. Tile trims, when you get your tile trim, make sure that you're gonna get the coverage that you need. You don't wanna to get too big and you don't wanna to get too small. This one that I've got is 12 mil. It actually works out to about 13 mil. And um, my tiles are nine mil. The bed of adhesive that I was gonna use, uh, I was gonna go for a six mil notch trowel, square notch. So square notch, you always get half the bed depth. So that would have left me with a three mil um, bed of adhesive, but I've only got an eight mil one. I think I gave Dan my six mil one, square notch, and he's also got the eight mil U notch as well. I would have preferred to use a six mil, especially I've got flat walls, so it doesn't really matter, and them tiles are not that big. In general, you should match the thickness of the tile to the thickness of your, um, notch trowel for walls at least um floors you need a solid bed trowel don't ever scrimp on that otherwise your tiles are crack uh won't know dan <laughs> future aiden here eight mil is definitely the way to go so it's a good job i didn't have that six mil i've got a brand new bucket trowel uh, i'm going to mix up in flexible buckets that's the easiest way and i'm going to use my sds drill with a mixer I've got a longer one because I don't want to be bending over and doing my back in and I've got plenty of water buckets. I'm also, this is a, a brick point in chow, I think it is. Um, so I'm going to use that as well. I'll show you, you need to do a little bit of that if you're using the battens. I've already cut my tile trim so it's ready and rocking to go. You can do that with a, a little hacksaw and some, some tin snips as well. My hacksaw wasn't that good. <laughs> Uh, I've resorted to actually use an angle grinder and that was 10 times easier and much quicker. I'm going to use my tile wet saw drill on this. Uh, it's a bit extreme for this but it has got this which will come in handy when I actually do the bit on the ends because this is a 45 degree pitch and um, would you believe it this is 45 as well plus I can bevel them and then that will come in handy when I do the back wall because I want to just cut it up rather than having a big gap. And if you are following me as a bit of inspiration, your DIY, don't think that you can't do tiling just because you haven't got a big machine like this. I have used a Titan wet tile saw before quite successfully in my last place and I've done large format limestone tiles, big slate tiles as well as some metro tiles and it all turns out really nice. I'm using Ultra Adhesive, standard set, flexible. Now you want flexible because we are on timber frame. Rapid set, it gives me the fear because once you're in, you're in. That's what I had to use on the, the other tiles that I had, the limestone ones especially. You don't really get that much time to work with it. I don't know why, I, like, I've done this loads of times, but I haven't done it for a couple of years now, but. I feel a little bit nervous. We go for water first. Don't mix up too much tile adhesive. You'll get a feel for it in the end. The good thing about the Titan drill, you can put it on a slow setting. Don't mix up too much tile adhesive, if he says, as he mixes up too much. I'd be in trouble with this with this rapid set. Basically, you need to get a dollop on your bucket trowel, yeah, and you flip it, you count to three. If it drops on three, that's the right, what you want. One, two, three, yeah. Nice. Bucket trowel. Get some on there. You just want to push it into the wall first. Don't worry about getting your notches just yet. That big lump there we don't want, so we're going to get that first. You want to try and keep the top of the actual batten clear. We don't want that. And because I'm doing the tiles 
vertically, I'm gonna then comb it from that side to this side fully. So we use that little tool just to get that bit off. Or you can use your finger. I was using your finger before in the past. Try and stay clean with our nice clothes on. <laughs> So we're just going to take the bottom of this off again because basically when it comes to taking your batten off you don't want it to get stuck to your tiles. Wet sponge. I've already marked my middle tile here or the gap rather. Is that going to work out right? Oh, shall I quickly say? Yeah, yeah, that works. Push it in, shake it about. Push it in, shake it about. Okay, first two tiles down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, this looks good in the end. I've never done tiles this way before. There's probably too much grout there. Let me take that off. That's what I do as well, if, if there's too much um, adhesive that comes out, uh, I scrape it off because you don't want to deal with it afterwards. Okay, better technique, right? Put your tile in close to the other one, push it up and then pull it apart and then you won't get the adhesive go into the little gaps. for this session. Come on. So yeah, it was a bit faffy, I mean, these tiles, they're not for the faint-hearted. It takes forever doing the, these little ones. The only little bit I had an issue with, um, where the boards join. And I've put the tape on, you can see that. I mean, that's only like a millimetre, but it's enough to like bump up the tiles because they ended up bridging it there. So these ones were a little bit further out than I needed, wanted them. So I had to push them back when I put these ones on. 
Do you want to see how square I am? Wobbly wobbly. So I'm pretty much bang on that way. And then plumb this. I'm about two mil off from top to bottom, I reckon. But that might just be the accuracy of the laser. Because let, let's face it, it's not exactly like the most expensive one in the world, but it does the job. And two mil off from top to bottom. I don't think anyone will see that once I've grouted and everything. I'm going to call it a day. I'm going to go and have my dinner and stuff. I'm going to clear up my bits. And then tomorrow I'm going to bang out that wall and that wall and then the following day I'll do the cuts around the bottom. I'll see you then. Oh no, I think I've made a boo-boo. If you notice here I've got two bags of tile adhesive. The reason why I bought the second one, which was this one, which is a new one, because I wanted to check the date on this one to make sure I was still within the time limits. And in the excitement of it all, who forgot to check the bloody date? Oh no. So, uh, it's gone on. Hopefully it's gonna set properly. Otherwise, I've, I've just caught that right up, and I? Um, so yeah, I'm gonna use the new bag on these balls. We'll see what happens. I think it'll be all right. It's, it's a, over a year out of the date range. So that that's, Probably no good, is it? I mean, I'd, I'd risk it up to a year, but it's over that, so. Oh well, you live and learn, check, check the date. If you say you're gonna do something, do it. Don't forget. I'm gonna take out all these little bits. Hopefully it doesn't pull the tiles off. <laughs> if it's not set. I think it's set, it's, so, it's almost there. I mean, it should be there definitely, shouldn't it, really, but. What do you think? I like it. I sent Lou a picture. She went, what have you done? What is that? I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, what? Why have you put the tiles that way? <laughs> grout colour. What, what, what grout would you use on this? I wouldn't say I've got it absolutely bang on everywhere, but it's close enough. Especially with the rustic thing. Uh, these, these tiles, they're a little bit convex, I think. Um, but that's close enough. I did randomly in two places. I used a three mil spacer because one one or two of the tiles were a little bit shorter than the others. And then up here, it's it's not that pretty. Uh, obviously, they're they're not even cuts or anything because I had to stagger it down because this side was lower. But I'm hoping I'll be able to get a nice fat. Um, silicon bead on that and cover it up and it, you won't think anything of it. So for tile trim, and this is a little bit flexible, so we're gonna use the laser to mark it out. Remember we left the batten back a little bit further so we can fit the actual tile trim all the way down to the bottom. And to mark it, I'm gonna use my straight edge. This is a box section from Rafina. They're only about 40 quid, comes in proper handy. I use it all the time. I'm also using my level on the side, just in case. We can't necessarily trust the accuracy of that laser. Plus it is like a two millimeter fat line as well. That pot life is two hours at 20 degrees. I probably took about two and a half hours to do that. This I would say is probably gonna take me longer because I need to do them diagonal cuts. I'm gonna put the tile trim on the way that I normally do it. The thing is when I've done it before, you put the tile trim on and then you you tile it within half an hour. So with bigger tiles, these are going to take ages and I might not have enough time to adjust the trim if I need to at all. I just had a bit of a panic because <laughs> I had a bit of a count up on the tiles. How many I'm going to need? And I, I looked at these down here and I was like, oh, I haven't got enough tiles. How did I manage to do that? Surely not. The tiles that I've got here, if I make no mistakes whatsoever, I'll be able to do both sides, but I won't be able to do the bottom section. And then I looked out here. There's three more boxes. Thank God for that. I'm sure you take the 
plastic off so we stick it on the wall now we've marked on the wall what we're going to do is put some adhesive down that line we don't need to go mental you can use any trowel um, i'm using a three mil notch trowel and you basically want to get it on there but don't go near the line so you want to stay at least five mil off now we're just going to push our tile trim in then tile like the bloody wind i've worked this out so hopefully there's a 50 mil cut over here i've already set up my tile so bang it out i'll see you at the end We are done. How long do you reckon that took me? Three bloody hours. Why does it take so long? Don't do little tiles. They look nice, but it's a nightmare. Uh, I ended up doing the cuts two or even three at a time sometimes. That works out really well. The little triangle bits, they, they wasn't too bad. And the trim was all good. I've got my grout line, two mil, same as everything else. And I would say by the time I got to about maybe this tile, about midway up, that trim wasn't going to move really at that point. But lucky enough, it was bang on. So we're all good. Everything looks nice. And I was questioning my sanity why I ended up going right up to there, like an apex. Maybe I should have just cut it off like here, but I don't know. Maybe that's a... It's a nice design, a eh? nice design's choice. I would crack that out, but I started late today and I don't really fancy it. Um, I'm at a nice point where I can stop and tidy up and go and have my dinner and stuff. We're on a home stretch, woo! I've tiled all the walls now. When I done these two walls, I was working about a meter square at a time. So I've done a little bit more than this wall, spread it all out and then just tile on i did have to do some precarious cutting on the tile saw i would normally use a diamond hole saw but these tiles it just didn't work out right just the bottom bit to go now i took the battens off they didn't stick to the tiles i've learned my lesson from before <laughs> the holes that you get left with i just feel them with sealant so it maintains the tanking around the whole bottom of the shower so that's all good these last tiles I only had to cut them down maybe four or five mil. So just taking off the little slivers, that was handy having the wet tiles off for that. I could have bumped up the rest of this a little bit more so I could get in full tiles, but that would have just ruined the little triangle bits that I've done. Now I would normally use um, glazing packers at the very bottom, but these, they're a bit serrated. With these little tiles, I was worried about it grabbing it at the bottom and just pulling it off so i didn't want to risk that i went out and actually got these little wedges for these bottom tiles i would normally trowel the actual back of the tile but these are so small that's just asking for trouble i've stayed proper clean so far yeah i've changed my t-shirt a few times but that's because of my stinky armpits <laughs> <laughs> i'm going to trowel the wall um it's going to be a bit tricky i've cleaned all around the edges like i've taken the tape off so everything's ready to go and squeeze in and i will see you tomorrow for the big reveal last night was a total bloody nightmare i just mixed up the adhesive went to cut tile and i knocked over a full bucket of water <laughs>
you go, job done. I think I've done all right considering I haven't tiled for two years and then the time before that was three years before that and that was my first time ever tiling. So <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not too difficult. But these tiles, there's a few bits I'm not happy with, I'll show you. Ridiculous amount of spaces. There's no way I could use a tile leveling system with this. As a result of that, I have got some lippage here and there. Um, that one, that's a one mil lip. But once the grout goes in, you won't even notice that it'll be fine. I've only got it there and a couple of places over here. But out of 428 tiles, to have lippage on, what, five of them? I think, I think I've done all right. Uh, the gap down there, on that last tile as it goes, uh, it's, it, it's up to, I think it's five mil. Normally I'd, I'd like about three mil, up to three mil around the edge. Shower set up. I've cut it out like this, just so I can make sure that I can get the actual um, fitting in that I need for the shower. I, I don't know how I feel about this. Has anyone ever done electric showers before? So you end up with just a big hole in here. I'm going to leave that to properly cure before I actually do the grouting. Um, if anyone does this, you need to get out the adhesive from the grout lines. You should do it the next day. I don't need to because mine are already clean because I've done it as I went. Today I was planning on tidying all this lot up and just emptying it all out so I could get ready to do the flooring but it was raining today and I just sat in a caravan not really doing anything. <laughs> I just like I'm not very productive when it's rubbish weather. I haven't been very productive in general. I say at the moment I'm only running on about 50% productivity, which isn't very good because I'm not getting things done very fast, am I? I haven't been desperate to finish that. But you remember before I said the water heater stopped working on the caravan. I said it was broken. It wasn't broken. I just hadn't fixed it yet. And I took it apart a couple of weeks ago and uh yeah i fixed it so we're all good so on next week's exciting episode or episodes i do need to make some bird boxes and i'll show you how i do grouting as well in the meantime if you haven't subscribed please do so hit the bell notification thanks for watching see you later